Being able to have a digital backup of your DVD and Blu-ray collection is quite handy, whether it be for backup purposes just to keep them protected, or maybe you have a Plex server, a media server in your home that you want to be able to put the DVDs on. Or maybe you want to be able to put it onto your laptop and take it with you when you travel to watch movies on the airplane or when you're sitting bored in your hotel room. Hello everyone, my name is Andy and welcome back to CapTech and today I'm doing a review of the DVD Ripper Pro software from Wonderfox. Now real quick before we get into it, this is not free software and full disclosure the company did send me a key to be able to test out the Pro version features to be able to do the full review for it. But they did not have any input on the review, they aren't seeing this review before anybody else is or have any input whatsoever on the outcome of it. But I wanted to let you guys know that I did get a license key for free to do the review, but the review is my honor opinion. So we'll cover the basic installation of the software just to get things started. It's a basic installer. There's nothing super complicated about it. You select the end user license agreement that you accept it. You tell it where you want to install the program at. You click install and it goes through and copies over the files and it does it relatively quickly. So after that you are good to go and you are ready to run the program. Now one small annoying thing that happens when you first install it is it pops up and goes straight to their website to let you know say hey thanks for installing it. By the way if you want to buy it here is what the actual price is now we have a sale going on here's the limitations as to what you can do with the free version the biggest problem with the free version right off the bat is that you can only rip 15 minutes of each dvd now i don't know who would only want to rip 15 minutes of there other than just to be able to give an idea as to how it turns out when you use this but that is the limitation of the unregistered or free version of the software. You have access to most of the different formats and options within there, but as far as length, you can only do 15 minutes at a time. So that's kind of a big pain in the butt. Okay, so once you are ready to start using it, you select which option you want to. Chances are you're probably going to choose your DVD drive as the source just because that's what you're ripping a DVD for. And it'll go through and input a lot of the scenes. Now do keep in mind this is a DVD ripper software, so it doesn't work at all with Blu-ray. I tried multiple Blu-rays in the drive or whatever and didn't even recognize it as a disc. So do keep in mind that this is strictly for DVDs. Now if you have no idea what you're doing when it comes to ripping DVDs or conversions or compression ratios or anything like that, that's totally fine. The software software makes it really easy to use. It breaks down the different scenes within the video so you can go through and select the different ones if you want to. Uh, if you know what you're doing, uh, chances are it's going to select the very first scene that's in there which is the main movie. Then at the bottom you can go through and select where you want the output to be as in where you want to save the final version of the DVD and then you're ready to go. Now you pull up this slide out menu here and you'll see tons of different pre-selected formats. You have your quick copy if you just want to rip a one-to-one -one straight from the disc over there. Then you have different video formats formats that you want to choose from regular video, HD and 4K format options are available too, web format, or just audio if you want to get just MP3 of it. And then you have some specifics based on company like Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, Google, LG, Amazon, etc. And within each one of these subcategories, you have different pre-selected choices you can select and it'll go through and change all the settings for how it's going to rip the DVD based just on what you did. That way you don't have to manually try and change any of the settings around it does it for you. For this video, I'm going to select the basic MKV file format. This is what I use for everything on the Plex server. And once you have it selected, you can raise the settings options here. And you have different video audio settings. You can change the encoder, the resolution, frame rates, the bit rate. And you can change it from constant bit rate to variable bit rate. If you know what you're doing and when you get in there, you do have that option for a little bit more advanced settings. It has all the defaults that you can choose automatically if you want to. Or you can set them up and make your own specific options here. You can change it however you want to and then just save it so you can use it for future versions here and so you do have a lot of control over it but if you are incredibly new to this and you're super nervous about doing the wrong one you can select just one of the basic formats and it'll automatically change all the settings for you so you don't have to know what you're doing specifically to be able to get the right format and if you minimize the settings output menus then you have this little slider that you can go to adjust between high quality and low quality low quality will rip at a higher speed obviously and higher quality is going to go at a lower speed and that's just going to basically change what the bitrate is when it's encoding it there. So if you don't mind letting it churn away for a good long time, then you can go ahead and just choose the highest quality because that's probably what you're going to want to be able to see on there anyway. But at least you kind of have that option as a slider to see what works best for you. 
Uh, at the top of the program, you'll see the button to register it if you want to buy it. And so you can put your code in there, check for updates. You can go to the options. You can see different batch conversion ratios if you want to. You can see the different kinds of options you have. You can enable GPU acceleration if you have a better graphics card in your computer to allow faster encoding. There's just where the basic options are here. The default that you have when you install is going to be what you need. There's a help center, and then there's the drop-down menu if you want to get some more information. Most of those are just links to their actual website. So when you're ready to go, you have everything set up the way you want to, you just click on run. Now just to show you what it looks like, I'm doing this in the free version so you can see what it pops up with the unregistered copy. It tells you the different limitations you have between unregistered and registered with a link to buy of course. Or you can just click on continue and it will begin to rip the first 15 minutes of that video. Now something to keep in mind is the speed in which it's able to rip the files to your hard drive is going to be dependent on the read speed of the DVD drive that you actually have the disk in and the write speed of the hard drive that you put it on there. And then of course the level of compression that you have on here, the quality that you choose, all that other stuff is going to affect how long it takes. But on average it take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes for a decent sized copy of a disk to be put onto your hard drive with different compression. And then of course once it's done you're going to get the pop up to say hey congratulations you're done since I'm using the giveaway version here it'll give me an offer to buy 50% off the upgraded full version or if you're using the free version it'll pop up and say hey here's what you can get with the full version if, if you don't want to use the unregistered version anymore so it's just kind of a pop-up you can click just the X button to close that and go back to the program or click on open it'll open the file up to where you finished recording it to now for this next part I'm showing you information about the specific files from within my Plex server just because it gives a really good breakdown of everything that's there the information on the screen right now was taken after I did make MKV which is is a different piece of software that all it does is it rips the video straight from the disk onto the server no compression or anything else to go along with it it's just a basic file and you can see that it's got a bit rate of a little under 6,000 and the total file size for this is around 5.7 gigs that's something to keep in mind when you're ripping a bunch of DVDs is that the higher the bit rate with no compression the larger the file size is going to be so then what I did was I ran the same movie through the Wonder Fox DVD Ripper software that I'm showing here in the video. I made the same file format. I chose MKV as the file format and left all the settings as default. Didn't change anything about it. This is just a regular setting if you did nothing else in the software. And you can see the bitrate it chose was at 1409 kbps. This was done through the H.264 compression codec. So you end up with a file size that's just a little bit under 1.4 gigs in size versus over 5 gigs just the straight DVD rip. And then I did the movie the third time in the same software here, except for when I chose the MKV file format. This time I set the settings to high quality, so it took longer to do it, of course, but it used the exact same codec. And you can see here that the bit rate was almost twice what it was in the original, just leaving on the default. And the file size was at 2.35 gigs, which is still less than half than just ripping it straight from the disk to the server by itself. So you can see by using the software here that you did get a good chance of having a much smaller sizes because you're not just ripping straight from the file sizes. So oftentimes what we'll do if we're using something like a DVD rip, like Make MKV, where it's just pulling it straight off of the disk, then we have to use another piece of software like Handbrake to recompress it, to re-encode it so that it's a much smaller format because having six and seven gig files will fill up your drive really quickly, which you can see by using a WonderFox here that it was able to rip it and compress it at the same time so you get a good quality video, but at a much smaller file size. So we'll switch over to the actual website now for WonderFox, which of course links to all this is going to be in the video description down below if you want to go check it out. But you can see for a single one PC license that's a lifetime license, it's about 30 bucks. And of course they have different deals where you can get multiple PCs, etc. for different kind of values depending on what their sale is going on at the time now. But you can see right now that it's a $30 value. So this kind of comes down to trying to determine if, if that's valuable enough for you. Um, normally when I'm ripping DVDs, like I said, I'll make use of some free software like Make MKV where it rips it to the server. But then I have to use another piece of software to re-encode it so that it doesn't take up so much hard drive space. So if that's not something you want to do and jumping through all the hoops and you just want to be able to click a couple buttons and it's done, you don't have to worry about it, then that extra 30 bucks might be absolutely worth spending a little bit of money on for a lifetime license. And that comes with free upgrades, technical support, you get help from them if you need any problems and you got a money back guarantee i think that's 30 days as well too so so in the end i can say that i do think the price of the software is actually worth it considering how much time it saves you from having to do all the other hoop jumping through using the free software 
Okay, so I'm going to be wrapping up my review there. Um, I honestly think this software is really good. It's really easy to use for people who don't know what they're doing, um, but it does have the tools available for people who do know what they're doing to make adjustments and changes to work the way they absolutely want it to. But for the novice user, this works really well with doing it right the first time without making it super confusing. So in my opinion, this is actually really good software. It's really fast and powerful. The $30 price tag is not that bad considering how much you're getting here. So, you know, that's just my honest opinion of it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section down below and I'll see if I can help you out the best I can. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button down below so that I know that you enjoyed it. And of course, be sure to subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on future videos. You have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.